Hello and welcome aboard the BioTrain. In this video we're going to talk about the New York State Diffusion Through a Membrane Lab. We're going to talk about part one where we're going to build a model cell and create a bunch of different concentration gradients and then see which molecules are able to diffuse across the cell membrane and which ones maybe won't be able to. The first thing you really want to concentrate on is this introduction here. This does a really good job of explaining what diffusion is, how it works, so make sure you read this at least one or two times or as many times as you need to really have a firm understanding of that information. The next thing we're going to focus on is the actual procedure for making your model cell. So this is actually obviously not going to be a living cell, we're going to make a model cell using dialysis tubing which basically looks like a piece of plastic tape but when we go back in the lab in a, in a second we're going to learn how when you get this wet this actually opens up into a tubing. Now this is a fixed membrane unlike a real cell membrane which can change its permeability. This dialysis tubing has a fixed permeability. There are microscopic holes in here but they are a fixed size. They do not change. So that's a little bit different than an actual living cell which does have some control and can actually change its permeability. This dialysis tubing is a fixed membrane. So basically the goal of this is we're going to make our artificial cell made with dialysis tubing. It's a fixed membrane and we're going to put starch solution and glucose solution inside of our artificial cell and then on the outside we're going to fill a beaker, a 400 milliliter beaker with water and then we're going to add iodine to the outside of the cell. Iodine is actually an indicator for starch and that will be important during this lab so keep that in mind. So what we're basically doing is creating a bunch of concentration gradients. Um, there's a concentration gradient of starch between the inside and outside. There's a concentration gradient of glucose between the inside and outside. There's a concentration gradient of iodine and even of water. Um, so we're going to see what happens to these molecules, um, see if they diffuse um, from high to low concentration across this artificial fixed dialysis tube membrane. So now we're going to move into the back and we're going to talk about how you're going to actually open up this dialysis tubing and prepare your setup. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to get a 20 centimeter long piece of dialysis tubing. Now, it appears like it's a piece of plastic but when you wet this take it to a sink turn on the water and let it run under the water and very quickly it will get soft and pliable and what you want to do is you want to rub it between your fingers and pretty quickly it will start to open up you'll see it start to move and then if you carefully try to get one end open and hold on to the other end, you'll see very quickly that it turns into an actual tube. So this actually has water inside and it has turned into a tube that's open on both ends. So that's the first stage. So once you get it to this point, you can let the water out. And then what you want to do on the one end is you want to tie off the end by just making an overhand knot. So here I am tying off one end of the dialysis tubing. And now what you have is you have a tube that's been tied off on one end and now you can fill the dialysis tubing with the starch solution and the glucose solution and then tie off the other end. So let's go do that. Okay, so in this next part we have our dialysis tubing, we've put it under the water and we've tied off one end and we have one end open. Now we're going to fill um, about an inch of glucose solution in here and an inch of starch solution and you want to leave a good inch and a half at the other end so you can tie off the other end. So you don't want to fill it too much or else you're not going to be able to tie off the other end. So. I'm going to go ahead and start with the glucose solution. So I have it open here. You can use a dropper. It goes pretty quick. There's one. You might have to do three or four depending on 
but you just want to get it so put one more would be three complete droppers and that's actually a good amount you see how I have um, about I don't know about an inch of glucose solution now I'm going to add my start solution one two three full pipettes and that's actually plenty a big enough cell and I still have enough left over to tie it off so now you want to carefully push all the excess down twist the cell so that it kind of traps the liquid in there and then continue twisting 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 and then tie off the end if you need help on this you can ask for help but try to do it yourself and there you have your nice cell now it's important to rinse the cell under the water next so that you rinse off any glucose or starch solution that's in these ends because we want to see if anything diffuses through the membrane so we want to start with a cell that has been well rinsed and doesn't have any starch or glucose solution on the outside alright here we are back at the sink and we have our cell tied at both ends I'm going to make sure that I turn the water on and rub my fingers back and forth and really rinse out rinse the cell and rinse the ends to make sure that there's no excess glucose or starch solution on the outside of the cell and now I'm ready to put it into a beaker okay the final stage of this setup we're ready to assemble our cell we have our artificial cell made of dialysis tubing with the fixed membrane inside of it we've put starch solution and glucose solution and we've rinsed it off well to make sure there's nothing on the outside then we're also going to put some iodine in the outside of the beaker so what we need to do is we need to put our cell into a 400 milliliter beaker and then fill it with water until it is covered you can use the sink I have a beaker here that I'm using to fill it and just fill it enough so that the entire cell is submerged in the water and now you want to add several drops of iodine and this looks like this stopper isn't working I'm just gonna pour it you're gonna add some iodine until you get the beaker a nice amber color at this point we've established several concentration gradients we have a concentration gradient of starch between the inside and the outside of the cell we have a concentration gradient for glucose between the inside and the outside of the cell and we also have a concentration gradient for iodine between the outside and the inside of the cell so now we're going to let this sit um, you can observe it you might notice something happening in the next few minutes but we're also going to let it sit overnight and then we're going to analyze it and see if we can tell if any of these molecules diffused um, with the concentration gradient so here's our complete setup the 400 milliliter beaker your cell with glucose solution and starch inside water filling up and covering the cell with iodine in the water on the outside now you want to put this aside make sure you label it so you can find your beaker because we're going to let this sit and then we're going to come back to it and see if we can tell which molecules diffused in what direction so this video has covered the information that you need to make the cell and complete the setup make sure that you make a prediction here so based on your knowledge of diffusion predict what will happen to the substances inside and outside the cell record your prediction here the next part which we'll cover in another video uh, we're going to talk about the chemicals the chemical indicators that we're going to use to be able to tell if these molecules move because remember molecules are so small they cannot be seen many times you have to use indicators to tell if the molecules are where you think they are 
So we're going to be looking at a starch indicator to see if the starch moved and we're also going to be using a glucose indicator. I will cover how to use those indicators in another video. I hope that was helpful.